Welcome to the Ian McNaughton Show. My name is Ian McNaughton. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, just a few things before we get into today's show. Uh, so today's Tuesday. I'm recording this on Tuesday. I meant to record this yesterday, but it didn't happen. Uh, this is the UFC uh, pod for the week from the Ian McNaughton Show. We're going to be talking about heavyweights and, heavyweights and some upcoming cards, so be sure to, you know, Stay tuned for that. Uh, tomorrow, it's going to be the rugby pod. I'll probably just record that after this pod. Um, so that that's going to be a really good pod. We don't know yet if France is playing Scotland this weekend in the Six Nations. So basically, tomorrow's pod might be irrelevant. But anyways, I'm still recording. I'll still put out a pod tomorrow. Um, yesterday was the NASCAR recap. Uh, we discussed the uh, O'Reilly Auto Parts 253 Daytona Road Course race. It was a great race. Uh, go, it was a great pod as well. So go listen to the podcast. Um, and if you haven't already checked it out, be sure to look at speakyourpeace.ca. That's our new website. We're doing new blogs there. Um, I wrote on Sunday about why it makes sense for the Sabres to trade Jack Eichel. Go take a look. Go 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 read. Go tell your friends. Go do all that fun stuff. Uh, and if you like Speak Your Peace. Uh, Go tell your friends. Again, follow us on Instagram at Speak Your Peace. Uh, we don't have a, an MMA uh, in, like fighting Instagram page. Maybe that's the next thing we need to do. Or we can just po- post more stuff on Speak Your Peace. Um, if you aren't following SYP Rugby, go do so on Instagram, literally at SYP Rugby. And if you're not following the racing account, it's at Speak Your Peace Racing, uh, where you can see our F1, NASCAR, all that coverage, all that taking place at Speak Your Peace Racing. So, Again, be sure to listen to yesterday's podcast. Uh, Be sure to find tomorrow's podcast. And then that's all for the Ian McNaughton Show. And then for the Speak Your Peace podcast later tonight, uh, we're going to be recording with Hunter Werner. That's going to be a really great podcast. You can catch that on Speak Your Peace podcast network. And we're just like churning out content left, right, and center. I don't know how you can be upset with us. And it's all for free. So go take a look. Go read. Go tell your friends. Go support the brand. And again. Thank you for all your support. It's greatly appreciated. And at that, after that, it's only going to get better. So thank you again, and let's get on with the show. All right. Uh, welcome back. My name is Ian McNaughton. Uh, thank you for sticking with us, joining us, whatever you're doing. Uh, so today it's Tuesday. Uh, we're going to be discussing the UFC, the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Uh, I got a, I got some hot takes coming regarding the heavyweight division. Uh, we're going to be previewing some upcoming cards because there's some really, really sweet cards coming up in the UFC here for the next month. Um so in case you didn't know, Derek Lewis beat Curtis Blades on Saturday with a with a KO. Basically, uh, Blades kind of just went in to Lewis unprotected. Lewis got him with the uppercut, and he won the fight. So congratulations to Derek Lewis. Uh, a tough result for Curtis Blades. He, he was a, a heavy favorite to win, and he had the speed. He had the agility, but Lewis just had, you know, that knockout power and, you know, fast punches and that was the difference in the fight. Um, yeah, he, poor job by Blades going in uncovered in a second round. He, it left him vulnerable for a Lewis KO, and that's exactly what happened. Um, you know, Blades recognized early in the fight that Lewis had, like, the hand speed and the power, and it put Lewis in the best position to win. So congratulations to Derek Lewis. Um, really, really awesome dude. Uh, really fun guy to watch. Really entertaining. And that, that was pretty much the highlight of the night on on saturday on fight nights um i i was really just anticipating the blades lewis fight there wasn't any other fight on that card that really really amped me up but it was blades and lewis because i wanted to see a really good heavyweight fight and i got a really good heavyweight fight what's also key with these heavyweights and especially um especially now with with the pandemic it, it's just like the cages because if you don't know so the UFC has been fighting out of, um, I can't remember what the arena is. I want to say AA Arena or something like that in uh, Abu Dhabi on Fight Island, Yas Marina. And they've also been fighting at the UFC Apex, which is like the UFC headquarters in Las Vegas. Now, the UFC Apex headquarters 
where they do the fighting, that little kind of studio place, that's a smaller cage than normal UFC arena cages. So um, I'm trying to think. So one of the, one of the big fights before the pandemic was John Jones and Dominic Reyes in Houston. And that took takes that that fight took place on a bigger cage than what we've been fighting on for pretty much the last year almost. Well, whenever the UFC came back, um, when you like when the UFC came back, they moved towards the smaller cage, and part of that is just because it's better for TV, it's better for lighting, it's better for personnel. Um, but what what comes with the small cage is more punches more knockouts because you're up close with a, 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 your opponent you're you're closer and you're gonna more likely make contact with the smaller cage just because of space um than you are with a you know with a normal cage if you've taken a science class and you know how particles work with space that's kind of essentially what we have with cages now it, it's been great because we saw uh, Stipe and Daniel take place in, in the small cage. Um, Stylebender against Paulo Costa in, in, in the small cage. Kamaro Usman against Gilbert Burns just uh, the week before last in the smaller cage. And it's made for some really good fights. Now, I don't know that they're going to keep the small cage after this. It's just what's impacted uh, UFC fights these last you know, 10 months. So we'll see how, when we get back to normal, how the small cage, big cage debate turns out. I think most fighters prefer the big cage, but the the, the people who really prefer the big cage are like the grapplers or the, or the ground and pound type of guys because they have more space to work. You don't quite have that same space in the smaller cage, but just something to note, just thought, something I thought I should bring, bring up and mention because it, it's – not the, the it's not the the reason why like Lewis won this weekend or Usman won the other weekend. It's just something that I've noticed. Something that should be mentioned. It's not the difference, but it's something that should be mentioned uh, in these fights. Um, so here's how I would plan the rest of the UFC heavyweight division with the Derek Lewis fight uh, on Saturday. Derek Lewis and Curtis. Uh, blades obviously so uh, this weekend we have another ufc fight night uh rosenstruck is gonna fight uh cyril gain which is gonna be a really really interesting fight it's the main event um rosenstruck had a last second like literally like last second or two knockout victory against alistair overeem i don't know was that a year ago now that was a really good fight but it looked like Overeem was going to win in decision, and then Rosenstruck won in um, KO in the fifth round. So basically, Rosenstruck got a big name victory over Alistair Overeem. Got knocked the fuck out against Francis Ngannou because Francis Ngannou is an absolute beast and a a, a madman. That dude gives me nightmares. I love Francis Ngannou, but goddamn, if I had to face him, I think I would just say no. I think I would just not even enter the ring. Um, so Rosenstruck, Rosenstruck is fighting Gain this weekend. If Rosenstruck wins, because that's the other piece of the equation here in the UFC heavyweights, or at least in the top 10. If Rosenstruck wins, I have Derek Lewis, Derek Lewis fighting the loser of Stipe Meocis and, and Francis Ngannou. That, play, that fight takes place on March 27th. Uh, I, I then have Rosenstruck fighting John Jones. Uh, in the heavyweight division. Because if you don't know about John Jones, he vacated his light heavyweight belt. He's now looking to make a run at heavyweight, partially because there is a bit more competition and because John Jones has done everything in light heavyweight. So there's not really a point for him to stay there anymore. I then have Curtis Blades fighting Alexander Volkov. I think that would be a really good fight. I think both of those guys are, are on the up, even though Blades lost. Both guys are still on the up. And it'd be a really technical match that would be really fascinating so blades versus volkov and then i have alistair overeem against uh zero gain i think that would be a really good fight too i think gain gain could challenge rosenstruck i think rosenstruck's gonna win this weekend but gain could challenge him as well um rosenstruck needs to win in like the first round or second round like he this, this is not a fight 
you know, that he should be going to the fourth or fifth round and because he's probably not going to win, I think, if that's the case. Um, which means if game loses, he could fight Alistair Overeem, which is not much of an easy t- task. That, that wouldn't be fun at all. Um, but if Gain wins this weekend, I still have Derek Lewis fighting the loser of Stipe versus Francis Ngannou. I have Curtis Blades fighting John Jones. I then have Alexander Volkov fighting Gain. And then I have a rematch of Overeem and Rosenstruck. I think there's not... People, I don't know why people like to criticize the UFC heavyweights, because there's a lot of good fighters in the heavyweight. Like, Curtis Blades is no, you know... No dummy. He's not a bad fighter. He just had one bad moment against Derek Lewis. So, and, and John Jones, I don't know what you do with John. Jo- I feel like starting him with like Rosenstruck or Blade is a good starting point for him because I think Jones has earned the right to at least face like a, a, a number five or number six ranked contender. It, Jones could even fight Alexander Volkov. I don't think that's as good for a mark from a marketing perspective or a fight selling perspective. I think of uh, selling Rosenstruck with John Jones or Curtis Blades would be a much better marketing opportunity, but there's a world in which Volkov could fight John Jones. Um, and Volkov's obviously a really good fighter, really technical fighter. I try to, I can't remember if his last win was over. I think it was over Alistair Overeem. Uh, just a little bit ago. So Volkov's obviously not a dummy. And Gain is still, he's kind of a prospect. He's still kind of working his way up into uh, the UFC heavyweight conversation. Uh, again, but for Rosenstruck himself, he's got the knockout power. He's a very raw fighter. He's not a very um, technical, savvy fighter. I, I, From what I've seen from my analysis of him, he can knock you out. Absolutely. He, he's got that power that you have to you know, respect and acknowledge, but in terms of actually fighting in terms of fighting skill, I, I don't think he's there yet. So I, I could see another rematch. I, I could see a rematch with him and Overeem. I could see him get the opportunity to fight John Jones because those are two recognizable names and Jones could, you know, make light work of him. Who knows? It, 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 there are no bad options when it comes to the UFC heavyweight division. And in terms of March cards, we are absolutely loaded. So, so this weekend, so the end of February is the Rosenstruck versus Game fight. That's the main event. It's not that great of a card. It's okay. Um, the 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 Blades Lewis card last week wasn't that great, and this is even worse. Uh, but March sixth, so we'll have a full UFC two fifty nine preview coming on either the first or the second. Uh, I'm trying to decide if I want to include it with uh, our Speak Your Peace podcast or if I'm just going to do my own show, my own preview. Maybe I'll get someone else as a guest to come on and, and discuss the UFC that uh, for that week. Um, fights that weekend. So we have Jan Blachowicz and Israel Adesanya for the light heavyweight belt, uh, Amanda Nunez and Megan Anderson for the women's featherweight belt, and we have Peter Jan against Aljamain Sterling for the bantamweight belt absolutely loaded card that night and and there's even some more fascinating and amazing fights that you're going to want to watch that weekend so ufc 259 be sure to tune into that march 6th uh on march 13th we have usc fight night with leon edwards versus Bilal muhammad Uh, leon was supposed to fight uh hamzat chameev and i hamzat uh, I think it's still struggling with COVID or it's having COVID issues. And that's why they couldn't make this weekend or th- that weekend, March 13th work, unfortunately. Um, Muhammad had a really good fight. I think it was in the Usman, the prelims of the Usman versus Burns fight. Uh, I'm trying to remember who he fought. He had a really good technical fight that that weekend where um, just consistent punches, good defense, took some shots, but still came back with shots. He had a really good full three rounds of action with Law Muhammad. I'm really excited to see how he matches up against Leon Edwards. Leon Edwards has not fought since the pandemic. This is going to be a really good test for Leon Edwards. Uh, also, Ben Rothwell and Dan Edge are on that card on March 13th. So take a look, watch that one, at least the Edwards Muhammad fight. That's going to be really good. Uh, March 20th, Derek Brunson and Kevin Holland face off on UFC on ESPN. Uh, they're still coming up with some uh, 
more fights for that one. I believe Connor, uh, what's his name? Not Connor, Gregor Gillespie. He lost to Kevin Lee, I think, during the pandemic. But Gregor Gillespie is also going to be on that card too. But it's mostly the the Brunson Holland main event that you're going to be interested in. You're going to want to watch on March 20th, and then. March 27th, uh, UFC 260, the second pay-per-view of the month, uh, Stipe Miocic, Francis Ngannou 2, they'll fight for the heavyweight championship. Also fighting in that card, we'll have Alexander Volkanovsky against Brian Ortega for the featherweights. Uh, we'll have t- uh, featherweight belt, excuse me, they're both featherweights. They'll be fighting for the belt. Uh, Tyrone Woodley will be fighting Vicente Luque. Uh, Woodley has really struggled his last few fights. He lost, I believe it was to... Gilbert Burns, I think it was, in, uh, for five rounds in just the main event, and Woodley just did not challenge him whatsoever for five rounds. So I, I this maybe is is one of the last fights we'll see from Woodley, but who knows. And then, of course, Sugar Sean O'Malley. He'll be fighting against Thomas Almeida uh, on March 27th. That's all part of the pay-per-view card, so you're going to want to tune in and watch that one as well. We, we are going to preview that card as well on March 27th. Uh, I'm I'm going to be pretty busy here at the end of March, early April, and then UFC 259, of course, with um, the Bohovich, Adesanya, Nunes, Anderson, Jan, Sterling, triple threat of belts up for grabs. It's going to be really great. I'm excited to see how this UFC you know, heavyweight discussion goes after this weekend. I'm excited to see how the rest of the pay-per-views go for the next month. It's going to be a really, really exciting month of fighting. Uh, hopefully you get to take part in our Saturday selections. We usually do that on our Instagram page where we, you know, post a UFC fight and who's going to, who do you think is going to win? So be sure to tune into that on Saturday on our Instagram page. Um, again, if you aren't already following us, do so at speakyourpeace.ca. Well, yeah, speakyourpeace.ca. You can follow us on the website, and you can follow us on Instagram uh, at speakyourpeace. Uh, go check us out there. Um, also, we got hoodies for sale. Uh, be sure to pre-order your hoodies. We're on Twitter, Speak Your Peace Three. That's where you can find us. It. It's we got so much stuff. I'll, I'll put this all in the uh, Spotify and YouTube description, so you can all check it out. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Hope you enjoyed this podcast. Be sure to check out the podcast tomorrow that we got going with Hunter Verner, the Speak Your Peach podcast, and the Ian McNaughton show on the uh, rugby preview recap from the past week and the upcoming week. So thank you again for watching. Thank you for all your support. We greatly appreciate it. And again, one more plug. Be sure to follow us on or like us and subscribe to us on YouTube. I got so much stuff. I got to write this down. Uh, Subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. Uh, That's where you'll see the visual effects that i have put into this podcast and mostly just the video podcast so thank you very much for watching thank you very much for listening enjoy the rest of your day chat again soon